I have once again jumped over to InDesign, but you will see that my document's a little bit different than we've been working in. I have a text-based document, and I want to show you how to use some of those spelling and fine change options to modify the text. So I have, I have a document, and I have lots of pages, and I want to go through it, and I want to make some adjustments. Uh, one of the very first things I can do is I can turn that dynamic spell check on so you can see all the little red underlines indicate where something is spelled wrong. The little green squigglies are telling me that it should be capitalized because it's a new line, that kind of thing. You can also do a spell check by choosing the edit menu and coming down to spelling and then choosing spell check. From here, it will highlight one word at a time and you can decide if that word is spelled right or wrong. So the book is written by L. Frank Baum. So if I skip ebook the next thing it takes me to is the spelling of the author's last name that is correct that's how you spell his last name so instead of saying change it I'm just going to say ignore all instances of bomb because that's how you spell his last name and I don't want to see the red squigglies over and over again and maybe this is how I want to spell ebook so I want to ignore all of those as well and you can keep going through the document until you've cleared out all of those little red squigglies if they bother you like they bother me but let's say that it's not an error. An error is reactionary, right? The software tells us something is wrong and we have to fix it. But maybe we're proactive and we just don't like something and we want to change it. You can do that via the edit menu and choose find change. When you use the find change dialog box, we're going to start with the text option first. You can select the text and at the very top the top half of the panel, you can choose what to find. So I want to find Oz and I want to replace it with Salt Lake City. So instead of referring to the wonderful Wizard of Oz, it's going to be the wonderful Wizard of Salt Lake City everywhere that it's mentioned in the entire book. Uh, when you start to search, you have the ability to search the entire document or a selection that you have or a highlighted selection or a box or a frame. And so I'm going to search the entire document and choose find next. It will highlight the first instance of Oz, and I have the ability to just say, yeah, go ahead and change that. <coughs> Excuse me. You can also choose Find Next again, and you could do this one at a time, but my document is 117 pages right now, I believe, and so I don't want to do that over and over again. And so if I'm confident that everywhere that I've used Oz, I want it to reference Salt Lake City, you can choose Change All and every time in the book that it references the Wonder Wizard, Wonderful Wizard of Oz, it will change it to say the Wonderful Wizard of Salt Lake City. And when they are on their yellow brick road on their way to Oz, it will say on the way to Salt Lake City. If we go back to the original document, I want to show you the formatting options. So let's say that I'm making these gumballs, but now I want them to look more rounded. So I'm playing around with effects and maybe I'm trying to use a bevel and an emboss and I've modified that bevel and that emboss so let's increase the size and I wonder what happens if I just keep increasing it that actually worked out pretty well let's go back a little bit um, so I increase the size maybe I change the color that it's being modified with so it's a little bit more kind of happy-go-lucky for gumballs, whatever you want to do. So you've modified your setting. Maybe you've also added a drop shadow for whatever reason, and you change the angle, and then you call that good to go. Let's say that six months from now you come back to this document and you're revisiting it and you're like, man, I really hate the way those gumballs look, but the gumballs are inside a gumball machine, it's really complex to modify, and you just want to change everywhere in your entire 400 page document that uses a gumball, because maybe you put the gumball on the logo and you've put it on different pages, you want to change or modify those settings. You can do so via edit, find and change. Once you launch the find and change dialog box, instead of choosing the text option, switch over to the object option. And I'm only going to demo this for objects, but note that you can do this for text on the bottom half of the Find Change dialog box. What you can do here is you can't type in Find the Shape Circle. Um, you can't type a word, right? But you can hit this little magnifying glass on the right-hand side to search. And then you can search for attributes that you're looking for. So maybe we're going to modify that Drop Shadow first. So you can click on Drop Shadow, and you can select that you're looking for just a drop shadow in general. 
right? So it's going to look for any drop shadow. And then we can change it if we come back in here to drop shadow. And we can modify it. So we can change the color of the drop shadow. Let's make it blue. And when we select OK, it will change the color of all the drop shadows to be blue. Um, so we selected OK to select it, but now we have to actually find next. It will find the drop shadow, and then you can change it to be blue. And then you can change all, and then all of them will change to be blue. It's a really cool feature if you're formatting pictures. So maybe you have a bunch of picture frames, and you decide that all the frames should be one point and wavy. Let's make it fatter so you can actually see the waves. And in this case, it will be a pink. Um, Let's make sure that color is saved. It is. So you have a bunch of picture frames that are on here, and you've used them in various places, but maybe you didn't make it into an object style. You could find all instances via fine change of strokes, and you just want the stroke. Oh, go down here. You just want the stroke that has a wave to it, so you find that option, and then you change it with a straight one. Okay, for time's sake, I'm going to end this video, but feel free to experiment with this option. I think it's one of the coolest fine change uh, features that InDesign has.